Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. The truth you tell yourself is the real truth. Can we just bow our heads this evening to appreciate God? Thank Him. He is worthy to be praised. There is none like unto our God. The one who gave us the breath in our nostrils, author and finisher of our faith. To you be all the honor. Thank you, Father, for this conference. Thank you, Lord, because you are ready once more to unleash on us your presence, your wisdom, your glory, your honor, that will live here better than we came. Thank you, Lord, because after tonight's meeting, we'll encounter the uncommon nature that you have, that you have also deposited on the inside of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Put those sanctified hands together for our Father, our mentor. Yeah, that's it. God's own servant, our life coach, Dr. Bishop Benjamin. God bless you, sir. Amen. When you see my face glowing, you know the secret. Hallelujah. He's one man I have developed so much interest on. And I'm not ready to give up yet. You know, anytime I see his photograph, I will always say, that's my bishop. Yeah. You know, there was a day we were driving, so the flex was outside. And the people in the car were not expecting me to just scream. I just said, Papa! I was like, I said, yeah, that's him, that's him. That's him. Please give it up for him one more time. Amen. Yeah. 23 years plus, he's been a father to me. And he has been a wonderful father indeed. He has not been an absentee landlord. He has been present. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to celebrate all the pastors in the house. All the men and women who took our time to be here. Your life will not remain the same again. You may be seated. This conference kicked off yesterday, and we began to look at the uncommon woman. Yesterday, we looked at the power within you, and we began to say that the word uncommon is something that is hardly found, very rare, very uncommon, something that hardly happens. And we began to look at the fact that Many women have played powerful roles, both in the time past and in recent times. In the time past, we're going to look at a scripture very shortly. And in recent times, you will be one of those that will be written about. Your amen should be better than that. I think somebody should key into that prophecy. In the recent times, your name will be mentioned. And it will be documented and written about you that this is what you have done. That you have exceeded an expectation. Can I hear a better amen? amen? May it be yours in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You will exceed the expectations of men. So it's time for you to stop blending in. It's time to stand out and be strong and be very courageous. Why? Because there is so much about you. There is so much 
about you. These days, I see myself doing some certain things that 15 years back, I couldn't handle. 10 years back, I couldn't. Even 5 years back, I couldn't handle. But now, I'm able to handle it. And I give God all the glory because he's taking me somewhere. He's taking me somewhere. After this conference, you will see yourself doing things that you never thought you can do. An extraordinary ability will come on the inside of you to wake up that giant on the inside of you. To say, yes, you can do it. Hallelujah. Today, we are going to be considering the strategist. The strategist. After now, you will be a strategist. You will begin to strategize. I say you will begin to strategize. The strategist. Wow. I'm so excited because this is going to be mind-blowing. We're going to be looking into just a woman in the Bible. A woman in the Bible. Her name is Tama. She might be conversant with some of you or you might be conversant with some, you know, that name. But you see, in the Bible, we have two Tamas. One was Judah's daughter-in-law. The other one was David's daughter. All right? But today, we're going to be looking at Judah's daughter-in-law. In Genesis 38, from verse 1 to the end. It's a lengthy scripture. We're going to take it per time. Genesis 38, from verse 1. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was so much about this woman that we can learn from. It says, and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned in to a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. That means they were married. And she conceived and bare a son and he called his name Er. And she conceived again and bare a son and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. And he was at Chesib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for his first son, Er, whose name was Tamar. Yeah, that's the woman we're going to be considering today. Judah's first son, Eh, the father Judah gave him a wife called Tamar. The father gave him a wife called Tamar. Before the father could give him such a woman, he must have observed that she was uncommon. She was extraordinary. She was a go-getter. She was perfect. She was just complete, you know. She was anything you can think of. For a wife. Praise the Lord. In verse 7 it says, Eh, Judah's firstborn, unfortunately was wicked. In the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. May that not be our portion. He was wicked. And God could not cope with his wickedness and killed him. But before he died, he had no child. He had no child. In verse 9, in verse 8, sorry, and Judah said unto Onan, go in unto thy brother's wife, I mean, marry her, so you can raise up seed for your brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. That means he knew that if I give birth now, or if this woman gives birth for me or becomes pregnant for me, that child is not going to be mine. It's going to be for my elder brother. So because of that, when they were mating, 
Instead of him to give seeds to the woman, he donated it to the ground. And it angered God. It angered God. And God killed him. <laughs> Follow me closely. So I began to see a scenario whereby Judah became scared. He was afraid. My two sons are gone. I have just one left. And that one was young. What should I do? So he was left with a wife. His last born. And a daughter-in-law. Who just became a widow. Twice. So what did he do? He began to talk to the lady and say, if you can understand me, please. My son is still very young, the last born. Can we allow him to grow a little bit so that I can give you to him to become wife? But somewhere in his mind, he was scared and afraid. Who knows if this one will die also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tama was patient. Very, very patient. And it says, in verse 11, Then said Judah to Tama, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, till Sheila, my son, be grown. For he said, lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tama went and dwelt in her father's house. Now let our story begin. Tamar was a woman that was bittered. She didn't like her situation. And in fact, she was not the orchestrator of her situation. Her first husband was wicked. And God slew him. The second one tried to help himself. Instead of raising a seed for the brother. And he displeased God and God killed him. And now the father is saying... You are going to go to your father's house and remain a widow there until my son grows up. Tama looked. What will I do? First husband gone. Second husband gone. The third husband is still very young. Now I have to go back. Is there any situation in your life that is taking you back to where you are coming from? Can we discuss something now? Is there any circumstance in your life that wants to take you back to where you are coming from? This is not the time to be carried away. This is the time to really consolidate and think. What is that that I'm going through that wants to take me back to where I am coming from? You left your house, your father's house. As a young girl, you have spent some years in your, in your husband's house and in your father-in-law's house. And now, nothing to show for it. And they are telling you, go back to your father's house and remain a widow there. She obeyed. But while she was there, she had to strategize. Come on, tell your neighbor, strategize. You see, the solution to your problem is within you. The solution to your issue is around you. It's so around you and so close to you that you need to open your eyes to see it. We are looking at something that is uncommon here. Of course, what she was about to do or what she eventually did was very, very uncommon, very rare. Something that happens once in a lifetime. But she took the bull by the horn and said, will I remain a widow in my father's house? <laughs> I want you to know that when it comes to the things of God, God can break protocols for him to do what he has to do. It was not an error that Tamar was in that man's life. He came, she came in as a daughter-in-law. But unfortunately, the situations were not making anything easy for her. She began to strategize. What can I do? What should I do? Will I remain here a widow? Now she's locked up. She cannot remarry. Why? Because a promise has been given to her. Let my son 
you know, grow. When my son grow up, you will become wife. Now, I can imagine somebody who began to cross into perhaps her 40s or approaching her 40s. Is this how I'm going to live? So, while she was in her father's house, news came to her that Judah's wife was dead. Perhaps she saw the obituary paper. Say, Shuan is dead. Your mother-in-law is dead. Oh, the Bible said Judah wailed for her, his wife. And when he was done comforting, he decided to go to a place. <laughs> Let's read on. He says, and in the process of time in Genesis 38, 12, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep hearers to Timnat. He and his friend Hiram, the Adulamite. And he was told, and it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnat to share his sheep. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What does it mean to share sheep? To remove the hair from the sheep. You know, normally, they usually, you know, use such items to do some work. Amen. So that a fresh hair can come forth. So he was going to Timnath. Now before this time, Tamar will always pray. Oh God. Oh God. God of Abraham. God of Isaac. God of Jacob. And Judah was one of Jacob's sons. And something was spoken about Judah. What was it that was spoken about Judah? You find that in Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God will not fail in your life. The word of God will not fall in your life. It will come to pass. In Genesis 49. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 8 to 10. He says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be on the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And he says in verse 10, the scepter, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and until he shall the gathering of the people be. Which people? If you look at this place, you will, could see that it was talking about Jesus in the lineage of Judah. It was talking about Jesus in the loins of Judah. How is Jesus going to come forth? Now that the first son of Judah is gone, second son of Judah is gone, the third son, they are postponing the woman. When he is young, when he is older, we will bring you to be a wife to him. Meanwhile, the man had another agenda. Why? He didn't want him to die. Perhaps he was thinking, somebody else should marry this boy. What can I do? <laughs> when the devil is planning, God to his planning. We are looking at Tamar. The scepter is not going to depart from Judah. 
A word has been spoken about Judah. And that word must come to pass. And here is Tama praying. The daughter-in-law to Judah. Praying, Father God, I cannot remain a widow in my father's house. Lord God, help me. Lord, do something. Lord, change the narrative. Lord, make something that is extraordinary to come out of me. Oh God, I am an uncommon woman. I am an uncommon woman. She began to pray. And all of a sudden, a strategy came. A word came to her. I feel it was God that brought that word to her that, look, your father-in-law is going to thin out. Rise up now. Put your widow cloth aside. Step out of your widowhood. Because you are not supposed to be a widow. You are supposed to be a mother. You are supposed to be a wife. You are supposed to be... Oh, come on now. Something has just entered me. She said, you don't mean it. When is it? They told her. By tomorrow. Oh my God. The Bible says she took her widow clothes off. I cannot remain in my father's house. I have to do something. Something extraordinary. Oh, it might be unconventional, but I don't care. Lord, guide my steps. The Bible says she went to the path and stood and was waiting for the father-in-law to come. She covered herself until I see him. I go nowhere. I don't belong to my father's house. I belong to this man's house. Oh, come on. <laughs> I am Mrs. Judah. I am not Mrs. Whatever be the father's name. I might be a widow, but I am still Mrs. Judah. Oh, come on. She sat down and posed as if she was a harlot, but she was not a harlot. It was unconventional. It was uncommon. She must leave her present status behind. And here comes the father-in-law who has no more wife because he has been comforted of his wife and looked upon her. Let me tell you something. I strongly believe Judah is a disciplined man. It was never written about him again that he performed such an act. It was not written before now that he performed such an act. He was a disciplined man. But you see, when God is moving you, when God is working things behind the scene, he doesn't recover. In fact, he doesn't consider protocols anymore. May God break protocols for your sake. May God change the narrative for your sake. May God cause something uncommon that will bring you out of where you are to where you ought to be. I said, the Bible told me that this man looked upon her and something told him, look again. Look again. Look again. May something uncommon happen for someone. May something uncommon or conventional happen for someone that will bring you to your glory. That will take you out of widowhood. I don't know who I'm talking to. That will take you out of widowhood. That will rise you up out of widowhood and place you in the home you ought to be. Nobody is going to tell you go back to your father's house. Nobody is going to tell you remain in your father's house. I don't care the promise that I'll be promising, but God is going to break that promise to give you your promised land. Hallelujah. He went to her, approached her. God blinded him. He didn't recognize the woman anymore. And he said, Can I have something with you? Thinking she was a harlot. And he said, of course, why not? They went somewhere. And he said, before anything, you will have to give me something. And he said, of course, I'm going to give you a sheep because that is who he is. He is a shepherd. And he said, not just a sheep. I need something more. At that moment, he was now obsessed with what he was about to do. And he said, anything you can ask. And he said, first, I need this scepter in your hand. What is a scepter? A scepter is a staff of authority. I need this symbol that will let me know that indeed that I'm giving birth to the child that belongs to this family. A descendant of Abraham. The one that carries the loins that Jesus is going to, the promise is going to come from. He says, I need this scepter. 
this authority, this audacity, give it to me. <laughs> oh my God. He said, uh -uh, only scepter. Why not? Take. He said, I'm not stopping there. Give me your bracelets. Give me your identity. Give me that which will make me know that I will be safe. Because what I'm doing is not conventional. What I'm doing can cost me my life. Oh, come on. Give me your bracelets. And he said, of course, you can have my bracelets. And he said, then, I need one more thing. I need your signet. I need the sign that I will use to stamp that document. That this one, what I'm about to do is legal. What is a signet? A signet is a ring that when you put it on that document, it stamps. Give me your ring. Perhaps that ring was a family hello from Abraham coming, handed over to Judah. He says, I need that ring. Why? Because what I'm about to do is unconventional. But I have to do something uncommon to get an uncommon result. Until you do something uncommon, you may not get an uncommon result. Oh, come on now. He handed it over. He said, but all these things are precious. All these things talk about where I am coming from. All these things are the symbol of authority that I have inherited from my fathers. He said, of course you can redeem it. You will definitely redeem it. He said, do I have your word? He said, of course. You will come back for it. He said, all right, no problem. And they went into each other. And the Bible said, she conceived. Oh, glory be to God. She conceived. When they were done, he left. He got to Timnath and gave a sheep to his personal assistant. I say, you, you know that part where we pass? He said, yes. He said, that, that's her lot. Go and give her. And recover my signet. Recover my, my staff. Recover everything that belongs to me. The Bible said when he got there, she was nowhere to be found. He searched and searched. Tama was nowhere to be found. He began to ask, please, there is a hard lot that normally stay here. He said, there is no hard lot here anymore. And there is no hard lot. There has never been any hard lot here. After searching and searching, he went back to his master or his friend and said, sir, oh God, Judah, there is no hard lot there. He said, what do you mean? He said, there is no hard lot in that place. Let's read it. Thank you, Jesus. Mantala de brohosi alanama. E kashotare na husele tisalanama. May God order your steps. In verse 21, then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was open by the wayside? Openly by the wayside. And they said, There was no harlot in this place. There was no harlot in this place place in verse 24 and it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah saying Tama thy daughter-in-law had played the harlot did you see she played she's not a harlot she acted And also, behold, she is with child. By warden, by harlotry. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be bound. Who are those who want to place judgment on you? I'll come to that shortly. And when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man who Who's these are? I am with child. And she said, Check it out, sir. I pray thee. Whose are these? The signets, the ring of authority, the bracelets of identity. Did you see it? 
bracelets. Not one, not two. The bracelet of Abraham was on his wrist. <laughs> Isaac. Jacob. He wore the three. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. It was complete. Come on, can you applaud God? If I were to speak my mind, I would say, Tama, perhaps, was the original wife of Judah. Why? Because it was written in her destiny that she would be the ancestor of the savior of mankind. If I were to speak my mind. The Bible said that the ways of God are past finding out. You can't understand it. Judah looked the Bible says in verse 26, he acknowledged them and said, she had been more righteous than I because that I gave her not to Sheila, my son, and he knew her again no more. That was the end of discussion. Like I told you, he was a disciplined man. He knew her again no more. What God wanted to do the uncommon nature, the uncommon thing, the extraordinary move, God already had done it. And the Bible said that she was with twins. Fares and Zira. Fares was born. If you look down the line, you will see Fares being the ancestor of Boaz. Boaz the husband of Ruth. If you want to clap, you can clap. He looked. Bring her. Let her be born. Many a times we cast judgment. But hey, hey, slow down. Slow down. Not too fast. Not too fast. She needed to change the narrative. Hallelujah. God used her to continue the bloodline. That was about ending. She needed to reclaim her honor as a wife. She took her cattle by surprise. And caught him in his own craftiness. God has said a lion's cub in Genesis 49 verse 2 and verse 10. That the scepter will not depart from Judah. How else was God going to accomplish the fact that the scepter must not depart from Judah? The scepter was in Judah's loins. He needed to come out. And God used Tamar to birth that. Thank you, Jesus. No wonder I said Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Until the ultimate ruler in verse Genesis 49 10. Please let us go through that again. Genesis 49 10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and until him shall the gathering of his people be. In verse 11. Binding his fall unto the vine, and his ass caught unto the choice, choice vine. Okay, no, I think 22. Give, give, give me 22. Oh, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Le baharama santa namaha. At this moment, just bow your head and say, Father, there is something within me that needs to gain expression. There is something within me that needs to emerge. I need an announcement. I need an endorsement. Help me, oh God. Let me bet what I need to bet. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your head. Tama demonstrated an uncommon attitude. To continue the bloodline. And many things we are not in line, even with Jesus' coming. So uncommon and so unconventional. And let me quickly say this here that we are all, at one time or the other, marking people. Can we stop marking people? If you don't have an understanding about the situation, Mind how you talk into it. Can we be more reserved? I said, can we be more reserved? If you look at Rahab, Rahab was a prostitute. But the Bible said when the spies came, she hid them. Even when her king said, bring those people that came into your house out. She said, they are no more here, they've gone. Be while they were on top of the roof. And when night came, she brought them out and said, please, we are afraid of your God. We are afraid that when you people come, none of us will survive. But please, I have spared your life. Spare mine and spare that of my children. If you look at the genealogy of Jesus, Rahab, played a role and became the ancestor of Boaz. The ancestor of Boaz. So it's not just Tamar that did something unconventional. Rahab also did something unconventional. How about Mary, the mother of Jesus? So many things are uncommon. That are very rare. Mary was not in any way qualified being in the bloodline. Who was in the bloodline? It was Joseph. Joseph was betrothed, not yet married. The Bible said that when Joseph discovered that she was with child, he was going to just put up away privately and say, please, just go. Don't come and terminate our you know, don't come and stain. Please just go, 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 go. So Mary had no link. She was betrothed, not even yet married. That means there was no legality on her. But God had to step in to do something uncommon. To say, Joseph, don't be afraid to take this woman. Many times we look at people, we want to slice them. We want to burn them. We want to cast them away. You are not good for anything. From today, consider Rahab. Consider Tamar. Consider Mary. There were so many things that needed to be uncommon for Jesus to come. Can we slow down a little bit? Today, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you are from. Come as you are. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. 
And I'm here to give you rest. The peace that I give. The peace that I give. It's not such that the world gives. Can we stand up this evening and say, Lord, I submit to your leadership. It makes me know that no one is beyond redemption. There is room for all. Hence, he said, come. He said, come. 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 Oh, I'm unworthy. Come. Oh, I'm unfaithful. Come. I'm a thief. Come. I'm poor. Come. Come as you are. Don't change a thing. Thank you, Jesus. Even David was not left out. Bathsheba was not his wife. But something happened. And God forgave him. He became a murderer. But yet God forgave him. And through that line, Jesus came. Through that line. Can you lift up your hands and say, Lord, I might not be worthy. But I know you will accept me anyhow. I might not be faithful, but you will accept me anyhow. I might be poor, wretched, but Lord, I know you look beyond my faults. Is somebody praying tonight? Oh Lord, forgive me. Accept me. Let something unique come out of me. Let something unique come out of me. You are the potter and I'm the clay. Mold me and make me. There is something uncommon on the inside of me that is yearning for expression. James 1 5. He says, Let him that lacketh ask him that give it to everyone liberally as he wills, who upbraideth not. What does it mean to upbraid? To chastise severely, to charge with something wrong or disgraceful. To treat someone with contempt or scorn or reproach. God does not upbraid. He upbraided not. Yet he comforts. Open your mouth and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I yield to you tonight. Help me. Help me. Help me. Lord, help me. Father, help me. There is something that is uncommon on the inside of me. Help me to bring it out. Help me to bring it out.